coordinator of Inter-American Affairs, presents Sao Paulo, the fastest growing city in the world. Of Brazil's seven principal cities, Belém, Recife, Bahia, Belo Horizonte, Rio de Janeiro, Porto Alegre, São Paulo ranks second. Situated about 300 miles from Brazil's largest city, world-renowned Rio de Janeiro, about 50 miles inland from Brazil's largest port, Santos, the city of São Paulo, with its 1,300,000 inhabitants, is today the leading industrial city in Latin America. Starting at Santos early in the 16th century, a handful of Jesuit priests laboriously ascended about 2,500 feet of the precipitous escarpment known as the Serra do Mar. On the plateau above, at the Indian village of Piritaninga, they established a mission. On January 25th, 1554, these hardy pioneers celebrated their first mass. It was the anniversary day of the conversion of St. Paul, and hence the new city was christened St. Paul or as they say in Brazil, São Paulo. Great and glorious has been São Paulo's history. The Ipiranga Monument, built and dedicated to freedom. Here on September 7th, 1822, young Prince Regent Pedro of Portugal rose in his stirrups and raised the famous cry, independence or death, which made Brazil forever free of Portugal. On a hilltop overlooking this monument, appropriately stands the Ipiranga Museum, one of Brazil's notable cultural institutions and housing an historic record of over 400 years of Brazil's civilization. To Paulistas, which residents of this modern city and state are called, statistics and figures are important. For instance, a visitor will quickly learn that in 1920, São Paulo's population was 579,000, but that in 1940, it was more than doubled. 1,330,000. That the rate of increase between 1930 and 1934 was higher than Los Angeles, Detroit, Chicago, or New York. That the temperate climate, averaging 69 degrees for the warmest months and 57 degrees for the coolest, combines admirably with the heritage of their pioneering forefathers to make them highly energetic, enterprising, and productive people. Let us examine some of these facts and figures. Brazil is the largest coffee-producing country in the world. 60 to 70 percent of Brazil's coffee is grown in the rich red soil of the state of Sao Paulo. Brazil is fourth in world cotton production, and again Sao Paulo is her foremost producer. But unlike some of the larger American industrial cities, industry in Sao Paulo is diversified. The list is long. A modern wire and cable factory employing 2,500 people. automobile plant, employing 1,200 people, now totally devoted to making and assembling military vehicles for Brazil's rapidly expanding forces. A tire factory employing 1,350 people. The crude rubber is from Brazil's state of Amazonas.
a surgical supplies factory. Every square foot is designed to meet the high sanitary standards required in this type of operation. A shell casings plant. Each casing is earmarked for the axis. Nitrochimica of Brazil, employing 5,000 people working round the clock, seven days a week, producing dynamite, gun cotton, and other explosives. Rayon is an important byproduct. Pharmaceutical and biological products. This factory employs 1,500 people. The war has imposed heavy responsibilities on Brazilian industry. The Paulista has not been found wanting. To turn the wheels of his expanding industries, he has sought and found additional inexpensive hydroelectric power. This was no simple problem. Rain falling on the Sao Paulo Plateau forms rivers which flow toward the interior away from the coast. A daring engineering plan evolved. Why not harness these rivers, stem their flow, back the waters to the rim of the plateau, and then send them rushing down the steep escarpment of the Cerro do Mar to a hydroelectric plant below? The plan for this great engineering feat was transferred to blueprints, and soon there rose huge dams to stem the flow of the rivers. Soon large pumping stations were reversing their normal course. The waters formed large artificial lakes, and soon they were developing a head of 2,300 feet as they were sent downward through huge steel tubes to the turbines below. The plant has a capacity of generating over 250,000 kilowatts and is capable of further development to considerably more than twice that amount. This, combined with four other smaller power plants, has produced a total of 275,000 kilowatts. The Sao Paulo businessman is not only an enterprising manufacturer and creator, he is also a top-flight salesman. Here on these spacious, attractive grounds, over 400 firms annually display their wares. Appropriately, tribute is paid to world-renowned inventors and scientists, among whom are Edison, Santos Dumont, Pasteur, and James Watt. But proud as the Paulista is of his industrial achievements, he hasn't overlooked the other factors required in giving expression to a rich, full life. He has erected beautiful houses of worship. and family life is characteristic of Brazilians, and the Paulista is no exception. This residential district is typical. For the apartment house dweller, he has built modern and novel buildings designed for comfort and good living.
His schools and universities are progressive and numerous. Tantan, famous the world over for its snake serums, is one of many of his institutions devoted to scientific research. He has produced preeminent educators like Dr. Vital Brazil, one of the founders of Butantan, and Dr. Jorge Americano, rector of Sao Paulo University and president of the Brazilian United States Cultural Institute. Books play an important role in the life of a Paulista. This is the 20-storied municipal library. One of the reading rooms, air-conditioned and properly lighted. The Paulista is an avid soccer football fan. To see his favorite game, he has built a magnificent stadium, seating 80,000 rooters. Throughout the city, he has provided his children with numerous playgrounds and large outdoor swimming pools. All activities are supervised by teachers and attendants. For fine music, particularly the opera, the Paulista goes to the Teatro Municipal. For a Hollywood movie, to the Ipiranga Theater or scores of other picture palaces. For a night out, he may go to an intimate club like this one and dance his favorite samba. wife or daughter, he's built large department stores like this one, or smart exclusive shops like these. During vacation seasons, he may take his family by train to a seashore or mountain resort, or to Rio for carnival. If he chooses, he may go by air, over one of the three busy airlines serving the city or by automobile over a four-lane highway. Yes, bigger and better and more is the slogan of the Paulista, as from day to day he continues to change the skyline of his city. Reflecting the spirit of Ramos Azevedo, Sao Paulo's great architect and builder, the Paulista is building new streets, new viaducts, tunnels, avenues, business buildings, apartments and hotels, hospitals, Combining the old and the new, tradition and enterprise, Sao Paulo can proudly look back on centuries of work well done and can look forward to an assured future in orderly and progressive Brazil. Bye -bye.